Let's dive right in. In the real world, you'll probably be using Elasticsearch on a cluster of Linux machines, so we'll be using Linux in this course, Ubuntu in particular. Now, if you don't have an Ubuntu system handy, that's totally okay. I'm going to walk you through setting up a virtual machine on your Windows or Mac PC that lets you run Ubuntu inside your existing operating system. It's actually really easy to do. Once we've got an Ubuntu machine up and running, we'll install Elasticsearch, and just for fun, we'll create a search index of the complete works of William Shakespeare and mess around with it. After that, we'll take a step back and talk about Elasticsearch and its architecture at a high level so you have all the basics you need for later sections of this course. Roll up your sleeves and let's get to work. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and install Elasticsearch right on your own PC. Now, Elasticsearch is gonna be running on an Ubuntu Linux system for this course, and if you don't already have an Ubuntu system sitting around, that's okay. What we're gonna do is show you how to install VirtualBox on your Mac or Windows PC and that will allow you to install Ubuntu running right on your own desktop within a little virtual environment. Once we have Ubuntu installed inside VirtualBox, we'll install Elasticsearch on it. And after that, we'll install the complete works of William Shakespeare into Elasticsearch and see if we can successfully search that. So that's a lot to do in this one lecture. Let's uh, dive right into it. Talk about system requirements really briefly. Pretty much any PC should be able to handle this. You don't need a ton of resources for Elasticsearch. If you do run into trouble, however, make sure that you have virtualization enabled in your BIOS settings on your PC. And uh, specifically make sure that Hyper-V virtualization is off if that is an option in your BIOS. You can just you know go through these steps and see if you run into trouble. And these are basically troubleshooting steps. Also be aware that the antivirus program called Avast is known to conflict with VirtualBox. So you'll need to switch to a different one or turn it off while using this course if you're going to be using a vast. Now, if you head over to sundog-education.com slash Elasticsearch, for there you'll find step-by-step -step instructions for what we're about to do, as well as troubleshooting tips if you run into trouble, and you'll also find a link to the course slides there as well, so be sure to head over there for reference materials and any troubleshooting steps you may need. With that, let's dive in and just get this done. Let's get you set up, so let's go ahead and download VirtualBox, which is what we're going to use to run your Ubuntu image on your desktop PC. Just head over to virtualbox.org, and there should be a big friendly download button. Go ahead and select the operating system you're on. For me, that's Windows. And 118 megabytes later, that should come down, and it's just your standard Windows installer. Go ahead and click that. And you can accept the defaults. Nothing real special here. Accept any security warnings and be aware that it will interrupt your network interfaces while it's installing. Let's go ahead and start it up now that it's done installing. And if you do run into any trouble with installing VirtualBox, head on over to sundog-education.com slash Elasticsearch and there'll be some troubleshooting tips for you there. So here we have it. Next thing we need to do is download a Ubuntu image so that we can actually install that in our virtual machine. So head on over to ubuntu.com, just like that, ubuntu.com and head over to Downloads and Server. We want to get the latest ISO image for the Ubuntu server. So just hit the download button there and down it comes. Pretty big download. It's going to be about uh, 800, 900 megabytes or so. Now that our Ubuntu disk image is downloaded, I'm going to switch back to VirtualBox here, the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and click the New button. And give this thing a name. Let's call it, I don't know, uh, Ubuntu-Elasticsearch, whatever you want and it's going to be a Linux system, and it's going to be an Ubuntu 64-bit system. Hit Next, and set this to the middle somewhere. I have a 16 gigabyte machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and allocate half of that memory to uh, this disk image for Ubuntu. If you have less than that, just you know pick around halfway, but I wouldn't go below two gigabytes if I were you. So I'm sticking with eight gigabytes here. Go ahead and create a virtual hard disk, and accept the default for the format. Dynamically allocated is fine. And let's give this 20 gigabytes of space. It, we do need a little bit of an extra there to work with. And if you want to make sure that that's being stored on a disk where you have space for it, you can click on that icon there and make sure that it's stored on a drive that has sufficient free disk space. Hit Create. And now hit Start. And navigate to where you downloaded that ISO file for Ubuntu. So for me, that's in my Downloads folder. And hit Start. And that should kick off the installer for the Ubuntu operating system itself. So now that I'm in this installer, I can use the Enter key to accept uh, the defaults or the arrow keys to change to a different language if I want to. I'll hit Enter to install Ubuntu Server, and that will kick off the installer for Ubuntu itself. 
I'm going to go ahead and accept the defaults here. English United States, that is in fact where I am. Go ahead and change that if you need to. I'm not going to detect the keyboard layout either. And stick with the default English layout. Next, we need to give our host a name. Uh, Ubuntu is fine, doesn't really matter. And we need to type in the name for your user. So for me, that's Frank Kane. For you, it's probably something else. Hit tab to hit the continue button and then hit enter. And you need a username. I'm going to use fkane for myself, but again, use whatever you want for your account. Hit tab when you're done and hit enter to continue. And enter a password that you'll remember. Again, tab to the continue button. And re-enter it again to make sure you didn't fat finger it. We don't need to encrypt things. And you do have my time zone correct, so I'll accept that. Go ahead and accept the guided partitioning. Accept all the defaults here. We will tab to say yes to write those changes to disk. Remember, we're in a uh, sandbox here, so we're not really messing with our primary disk system for Windows here. Hit tab, then continue. Tab, then yes. I'm not behind a proxy, so I'm going to hit tab and say continue. I'll go ahead and set no automatic updates. It's not that important in this case. The uh, We're going to install our own software, so I'm going to hit tab and select continue here. Just stick with the standard system software. Go ahead and let it install the Grub bootloader. Hit enter here. Don't worry, it's not really messing with your real master boot record on your disk. It has its own little sandboxed environment. And Ubuntu has finished installing. Let's hit continue and go ahead and let it uh, start up and boot up for the first time. Here we go. Just let it do its thing here. And we have a login prompt, so let's go ahead and type in our account and password that we set up during installation. And we're in, we actually have an Ubuntu system up and running within our desktop. How cool is that? I think that's kind of awesome. Now, if you ran into any trouble, you can go ahead and uh, refer to our website there, sundog-education slash elastic, search for troubleshooting tips. All the latest tips and tricks will be there if you have any difficulties. But hopefully you got to this point without a problem. So the next thing we need to do is actually open up some network ports so we can communicate with our server from our desktop environment. So to do that, go back to the VirtualBox manager here, select our image here, Ubuntu Elastic Search, and hit Settings. Then select Network, and then open up the Advanced, and then Port Forwarding. And hit the Add button here. We're going to create a port for Elastic Search itself on 127.0.0.1 on port 9200 for the host and the guest ports, just like that. Hit the Add button again, and we'll also add a port for Kibana, which we'll talk about later. It's the web UI for Elasticsearch, also on 127.0.0.1. Port for this is 5601, just like that. And finally, we'll open up a port for SSH, because we need to connect to this thing somehow. That's also going to be 127.0.0.1, and this time port 22. So everything should look like this at this point. Double check, and if it looks good, hit OK. OK again, and we're done with that for now. Now we need to install Elasticsearch itself, but first we need a Java development kit environment installed because Elasticsearch requires Java. Let's get that out of the way. Type in sudo apt-get install default-jdk. You'll have to enter your password again, and type in y, enter. And off it goes. All right, Java and all of its dependencies are in place. Now we can install Elasticsearch itself. That's going to require a few steps. Let's get started. wget q big O, not zero, space dash space, https colon slash slash artifacts dot elastic dot co slash gpg dash key, all in uppercase, dash Elasticsearch in lowercase, space pipe, that's the uh, shift backslash symbol space sudo apt dash key add dash just like that double check everything because again all it takes is one mistyped keystroke and it won't work it should say okay so let's move on sudo apt dash get install apt dash transport dash https all right and this next one's kind of a long command echo space quote deb https colon slash slash artifacts dot elastic dot co slash packages slash 5.x slash apt space stable space main and quote space pipe space sudo t dash a 
slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list dot d slash elastic dash 5.x dot list. All right. And finally, we will actually install Elasticsearch. sudo apt dash get update ampersand ampersand sudo apt dash get install Elasticsearch. And here we go. Cool. Elasticsearch's software is installed. Now we need to configure it. So type in sudo vi space slash etc slash Elasticsearch slash Elasticsearch dot yml. And use the down arrow to go down to where it says network.host. There it is. So move your cursor with the arrow keys to the N in network and then hit the I key to enter insert mode in VI and then hit backspace to get rid of that hash sign. I'm right arrowing out to the end of this IP address and I'm going to backspace it out and replace that with 0.0.0.0. .0 I'm hitting the escape key now to get out of insert mode and now, now I'm typing colon WQ and that tells VI to write the file and then quit. All right, so now we've configured things properly. Now we just need to start Elasticsearch. So let's set things up so it starts automatically whenever we start our OS, which will make life a lot easier. So sudo slash bin slash systemctl daemon dash reload. sudo slash bin slash systemctl enable Elasticsearch dot service. And finally, let's actually start it with sudo slash bin slash systemctl start Elasticsearch dot service. And at this point, Elasticsearch should be up and running. Give it a few seconds to actually spin up, though, before we try it out. As an initial test, what we can do is just hit it with a curl to send a REST request at it. So let's say curl 127.0.0.1 colon 9200. All right. And if things are running, we should get back a response that looks like that. Now, if you get a res an error response, just try it again in a few more seconds. It does take a little bit of time for that to spin up, but you should see a response that says in it, you know, for, for search. And that means Elasticsearch is up and running and it's sitting there waiting for you to do searchy stuff with it. Pretty cool. We have Ubuntu running and we have Elasticsearch running. Let's play around with it. Let's get a little bit of a payoff from all this work. So just for fun, let's go ahead and install the complete works of William Shakespeare into our search index and search for it. So to do that, type in the following wget http colon slash slash media dot sundog dash soft dot com slash es slash shakes dash mapping dot json and that downloads information to define the schema for our shakespeare data that we're going to import to actually import that we'll say curl dash x put to submit a put rest command 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash shakespeare will be the name of our index dash dash data dash binary at shakes dash mapping dot json. So now let's get the Shakespeare data itself. We can do that with wget http colon slash slash media dot sundog dash soft dot com slash es slash Shakespeare dot json. That's the complete works of William Shakespeare. It's quite a bit of data. So let's actually index it with curl dash x post 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash Shakespeare slash underscore bulk dash dash data dash binary at Shakespeare dot JSON. And that'll take a few minutes because it's a lot of information. But once it gets going, it's going to look like you're looking at the matrix or something as all this information that's being inserted into Elasticsearch starts scrolling on through. All right, that finally finished a few minutes later. So we have all of Shakespeare indexed in our Elasticsearch server. Let's go ahead and issue a query on it, shall we? So to do that, I'm hitting enter to get back to a clean prompt. And we'll type in curl dash x get single quote 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash Shakespeare is the name of our index slash underscore search question mark pretty just to make sure that we get nicely formatted results. Single quote to close that off and then dash D single quote again and that will continue on to a new line when I hit enter. Start with a curly bracket because we're going to enter a search request in JSON format and then hit enter again. Quote query, quote, colon, open curly bracket, return. Quote match underscore phrase, quote, colon, open curly bracket. Text underscore entry in quotes, just like that, colon, and then in quotes again, 
to be or not to be, end quote. And then we're going to close off three end curly brackets like that. And finally, a single quote to finish off that command. So this is a JSON request that says, I want to search all of the text in Shakespeare for the phrase to be or not to be. Let's see if it works. And there you have it. We got back a result from the play Hamlet. And the text entry that it found on line number 3.1.64 is to be or not to be. That is the question. How cool is that? So congratulations, you have set up a virtual box on your PC. You have set up Ubuntu, an actual real Ubuntu server running within your PC, and you've installed Elasticsearch, which is actually running on Ubuntu right now. So we can do stuff. All we have to do with the rest of the course now is just play around with our Elasticsearch instance. So congratulations, that's pretty awesome. So as we go on in the next lecture, we'll talk more about what's really going on here and how Elasticsearch works and try to make sense out of all this stuff that we just installed. So continue on with me and we'll pick that up.